Once upon a time, deep in the heart of a lush bamboo forest, there lived a female panda named Mei Mei. Mei Mei was a gentle and kind creature, beloved by all the animals of the forest. She spent her days lounging in the sun, munching on bamboo shoots, and playing with her friends. One day, as Mei Mei was lazily snoozing in a sunny clearing, she was suddenly startled by a prickling sensation on her nose. She opened her eyes to find a small hedgehog named Spike perched on the tip of her snout. Hello, Mei Mei, chirped Spike cheerfully. What are you up to today? Mei Mei yawned and stretched her legs. Not much, Spike. Just enjoying the sunshine. What about you? Oh, I'm always up to something, said Spike proudly. I was just exploring the forest and I saw you napping here, so I thought I'd say hello. Mei Mei smiled warmly. She always enjoyed talking with Spike, despite his occasional brashness. Well, it's always good to see you, Spike. What's on your mind today? Spike scratched his spine thoughtfully. Actually, Mei Mei, I've been thinking a lot lately about the nature of happiness. What do you think makes us truly happy? Mei Mei paused to ponder Spike's question. She had never really thought deeply about the concept of happiness before. Well, she began slowly, I suppose happiness is different for everyone. For me, I feel happiest when I'm surrounded by my friends and family, and when I have plenty of bamboo to eat. Spike nodded thoughtfully. I see. But what about when you're alone, Mei Mei? Do you still feel happy then? Mei Mei considered this for a moment. I suppose not, she admitted. But I don't often feel alone, Spike. There are so many animals in this forest, and we all look out for each other. Spike frowned. But what about when you're feeling sad, Mei Mei? What do you do then? Mei Mei sighed. I suppose I just try to remember all the good things in my life. My friends, my family, the beauty of the forest, that usually helps me feel better. Spike nodded again, his spines bristling with curiosity. I see. It's interesting how different creatures find happiness in different ways, isn't it? I, for one, feel happiest when I'm exploring new places and discovering new things. Mei Mei smiled. Yes, that's true. But I think it's important to remember that happiness isn't always about what we do or have. Sometimes it's just about being content with who we are and what we have. Spike tilted his head. That's an interesting thought, Mei Mei. I'll have to ponder that some more. Thanks for chatting with me. And with that, the spiky little hedgehog scampered off into the underbrush, leaving Mei Mei to bask in the warm sunlight and ponder the mysteries of happiness. Days turned into weeks, and weeks turned into months. Mei Mei continued to live her peaceful life in the forest, surrounded by her friends and family. And although she sometimes felt lonely or sad, she always tried to remember Spike's words about the importance of contentment. As for Spike, he continued to explore the world around him, always seeking new adventures and experiences. But he never forgot Mei Mei's wise words, and he often found himself reflecting on them during his travels. And so the two creatures, so different yet so alike in their quest for happiness, continued on their separate paths through life. But they always found their way back to each other, eager to share their latest discoveries and insights. One day, as Mei Mei was wandering through the forest, she came across Spike sitting by a babbling brook, lost in thought. She approached him quietly, not wanting to startle him. Hello, Spike, 
she said softly. What are you thinking about? Spike looked up, surprised but happy to see Mei Mei. Oh, hello, Mei Mei. I was just thinking about what you said about contentment. I've been doing a lot of exploring lately, but I haven't felt truly happy in a while. Mei Mei nodded sympathetically. I know what you mean, Spike. Sometimes we get so caught up in searching for happiness that we forget to appreciate what's right in front of us. Spike sighed. I just wish there was something more out there, you know? Something that would make me feel truly alive. Mei Mei smiled gently. Maybe there is, Spike. But maybe it's not out there in the world. Maybe it's inside of us, waiting to be discovered. Spike looked at Mei Mei, his eyes bright with understanding. You're right, Mei Mei. I think I understand now. Happiness isn't about what we have or what we do. It's about how we feel inside. Mei Mei nodded, proud of Spike for coming to this realization. That's exactly right, Spike. And I think you'll find that the more you focus on cultivating that inner happiness, the more content and fulfilled you'll feel. Spike beamed at Mei Mei. Thank you, Mei Mei. You always have such wise words. I'm lucky to have a friend like you. Mei Mei smiled back at Spike. And I'm lucky to have a friend like you, Spike. We may be different, but we're both on the same journey to find happiness and meaning in our lives. And with that, Mei Mei and Spike sat by the babbling brook, contenting each other's company and the beauty of the world around them. They knew that their paths would continue to diverge and intersect, but they also knew that they would always be there for each other, offering support, guidance, and a listening ear whenever it was needed. For in the end, they realized, true happiness and fulfillment comes not from what we achieve or acquire, but from the connections we make and the love we share. Once upon a time, in a land of myth and legend, there lived a fierce dragon named Rorik. Rorik was feared by all the creatures of the land, for he was known to be ruthless and cunning. He breathed fire, had razor-sharp claws, and was covered in thick, impenetrable scales. Despite his fearsome reputation, however, Rorik was not happy. He spent his days hoarding treasure and intimidating the smaller creatures of the land, but he felt empty and unfulfilled inside. He longed for something more, something that would give his life purpose and meaning. One day, as Rorik was basking in the sun near a bubbling stream, he heard a rustling in the nearby bushes. He tensed, ready to pounce on whatever creature dared to disturb him. To his surprise, out popped a tiny hedgehog named Hodge. Hodge was small and unassuming, with a quizzical expression on his face. Hello, Rorik, said Hodge in a friendly voice. What are you doing here? Rorik snorted. What does it look like I'm doing, Hodge? I'm enjoying the sun. What do you want? Hodge blinked. I don't want anything, Rorik. I just wanted to say hello. Rorik sneered. Well, hello then. Now run along before I decide to eat you. Hodge didn't seem faced by Rorik's threat. You know, Rorik, I've been thinking a lot lately about what it means to be happy. Do you ever feel happy? Rorik glared at Hodge, irritated by his incessant chatter. What does happiness have to do with anything? I am a dragon, Hodge. I do not concern myself with such trivialities. Hodge tilted his head. But why not, Rorik? Isn't happiness the ultimate goal of life? Rorik snorted. Happiness is for weaklings, Hodge. 
I am a dragon. I am meant to rule and dominate, not prance about in fields of flowers. Hodge didn't seem deterred by Rorik's harsh words. But Rorik, what good is power and dominance if it doesn't bring you happiness? Isn't happiness the true measure of success? Rorik scowled, but he couldn't deny the truth of Hodge's words. He had never felt truly happy, despite all his power and wealth. For the first time in his life, Rorik felt a glimmer of hope. He began to think about what Hodge had said, about how happiness came from within and not from material possessions or power. He realized that he had been chasing after the wrong things all along, and that he needed to change his ways if he ever wanted to find true happiness. Over the next few weeks, Rorik began to explore the world around him in a new way. Instead of hoarding treasure and intimidating others, he sought out new experiences and made new friends. He even began to help the smaller creatures of the land, using his strength and power to protect them from harm. And as he did, he began to feel a sense of joy and contentment that he had never experienced before. He realized that Hodge had been right all along, that true happiness came not from what he had or what he could do, but from the connections he made and the love he shared. One day, as Rorik was lounging by the stream, he heard a rustling in the bushes. He tensed, ready to defend himself if necessary. But to his surprise, out popped Hodge once again. Hello, Rorik, said Hodge, his face beaming with happiness. How are you doing? Rorik smiled warmly at Hodge. I'm doing well, my friend. Thanks to you, I've discovered a whole new way of living. Hodge beamed. That's wonderful, Rorik. I'm so glad to hear it. The two creatures sat together by the stream, enjoying each other's company and the beauty of the world around them. And as they did, Rorik realized that he had found a true friend in Hodge, someone who had helped him find his way to happiness and contentment. From that day forward, Rorik and Hodge remained the best of friends, exploring the world together and helping others along the way. And though they were vastly different creatures, a dragon and a hedgehog, they knew that true happiness came not from their differences, but from the connections they made and the love they shared. As Rorik and Hodge continued to explore the world together, they encountered many obstacles and challenges. But they faced them together, drawing on each other's strengths and supporting each other through difficult times. One day, as they were wandering through a dense forest, they came across a group of lost and frightened animals. The animals were huddled together, trembling with fear and uncertainty. Rorik and Hodge approached the animals cautiously, sensing their distress. What's wrong? asked Rorik, his deep voice rumbling through the forest. The animals looked up at Rorik and Hodge with wide, frightened eyes. We're lost, said one of the animals, a tiny mouse. We don't know how to get back to our homes. Rorik and Hodge exchanged a glance. They knew that they had to help these lost creatures, even if it meant putting themselves in danger. Leave it to us, said Rorik, puffing out his chest. We'll get you all back to safety. And so Rorik and Hodge set out to lead the group of lost animals back to their homes. Rorik used his sharp eyesight and powerful wings to scout out the path ahead, while Hodge used his sharp senses and quick reflexes to navigate the underbrush. Together, they led the animals through the thick forest, avoiding dangerous traps and treacherous terrain. And as they did, they realized that they were doing something far more important than hoarding treasure or intimidating others. They were helping those in need, and that brought them a sense of joy and fulfillment that they had never experienced before. 
Eventually, after many hours of travel, they arrived at the edge of the forest, where the lost animals were able to find their way back to their homes. The animals looked up at Rorik and Hodge with gratitude and admiration. Thank you so much, said the tiny mouse, her eyes shining with tears. You saved our lives. Rorik and Hodge exchanged a smile, feeling a sense of satisfaction that was far greater than any treasure they had ever hoarded or any victory they had ever won. That's what friends are for, said Hodge, his voice soft and warm. Rorik nodded, feeling a deep sense of gratitude for the small hedgehog who had taught him so much about happiness and love. And as they walked away from the edge of the forest, they knew that they would always be there for each other, offering support, guidance, and a listening ear whenever it was needed. For in the end, they realized, true happiness and fulfillment comes not from what we achieve or acquire, but from the connections we make and the love we share. Once upon a time, in a land of myth and legend, there lived a fierce dragon named Rorik. Rorik was feared by all the creatures of the land, for he was known to be ruthless and cunning. He breathed fire, had razor-sharp claws, and was covered in thick, impenetrable scales. Despite his fearsome reputation, however, Rorik was not happy. He spent his days hoarding treasure and intimidating the smaller creatures of the land, but he felt empty and unfulfilled inside. He longed for something more, something that would give his life purpose and meaning. One day, as Rorik was basking in the sun near a bubbling stream, he heard a rustling in the nearby bushes. He tensed, ready to pounce on whatever creature dared to disturb him. To his surprise, out popped a tiny hedgehog named Hodge. Hodge was small and unassuming, with a quizzical expression on his face. Hello, Rorik, said Hodge in a friendly voice. What are you doing here? Rorik snorted. What does it look like I'm doing, Hodge? I'm enjoying the sun. What do you want? Hodge blinked. I don't want anything, Rorik. I just wanted to say hello. Rorik sneered. Well, hello then. Now run along before I decide to eat you. Hodge didn't seem faced by Rorik's threat. You know, Rorik, I've been thinking a lot lately about what it means to be happy. Do you ever feel happy? Rorik glared at Hodge, irritated by his incessant chatter. What does happiness have to do with anything? I am a dragon, Hodge. I do not concern myself with such trivialities. Hodge tilted his head. But why not, Rorik? Isn't happiness the ultimate goal of life? Rorik snorted. Happiness is for weaklings, Hodge. I am a dragon. I am meant to rule and dominate, not prance about in fields of flowers. Hodge didn't seem deterred by Rorik's harsh words. But Rorik, what good is power and dominance if it doesn't bring you happiness? Isn't happiness the true measure of success? Rorik scowled, but he couldn't deny the truth of Hodge's words. He had never felt truly happy, despite all his power and wealth. What do you know of happiness, Hodge? You are just a small hedgehog, scurrying about in the shadows. Hodge smiled. I may be small, Rorik, but I have a big heart. And I know that happiness comes from within. It doesn't matter how big or small we are, or how much power we wield. What matters is how we feel about ourselves and the world around us. Rorik thought about this for a moment. He had never considered that happiness could be found within himself, rather than in the things he possessed or the dominance he held over others. He felt a twinge of curiosity and even 
Hope. You speak wise words, Hodge, he said slowly. Perhaps there is more to life than hoarding treasure and intimidating others. Perhaps there is a way to find true happiness, even for a dragon like me. Hodge beamed. I'm glad to hear it, Rorick. And if you ever need any help or guidance, you know where to find me. With that, Hodge scurried off into the bushes, leaving Rorick to ponder his words. Years passed, and Li Ming grew into a wise and respected elder of his village. He shared the teachings and lessons he had learned on his adventure with the dragon with the other villagers, and became known as a wise and thoughtful leader. But he never forgot the dragon who had taught him so much, and who had become his dear friend. And so, as he approached the end of his days, he decided to seek out the dragon once again. He journeyed back into the mountains, retracing the steps of his grand adventure so many years before. And as he climbed higher and higher, he felt a sense of anticipation and excitement building within him. Finally, after many days of travel, he reached the dragon's lair. The dragon was waiting for him, his eyes sparkling with delight. Li Ming, my dear friend, said the dragon, his voice deep and rumbling. It is good to see you again. What brings you back to this place? Li Ming smiled warmly at the dragon. I came to see you, my friend. To thank you for all that you taught me so many years ago, and to share with you the lessons and wisdom that I have learned since then. The dragon nodded thoughtfully. I am honored, Li Ming. And I am curious to hear what you have learned. And so Li Ming and the dragon spent many hours together, talking and sharing stories of their adventures and the wisdom they had gained along the way. They talked about the value of friendship and companionship, the importance of seeking knowledge and understanding, and the need to embrace change and growth throughout life. As the sun began to set, Li Ming realized that it was time for him to return to his village. He stood up, feeling a sense of sadness at the thought of leaving his dear friend once again. Thank you, my friend, he said, bowing respectfully to the dragon. Thank you for all that you have taught me, and for the deep and abiding connection we have formed. The dragon smiled warmly at Li Ming. Thank you, Li Ming. You have taught me much as well, and I am honored to call you my friend. Remember, wherever you